ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम Welcome to MOOC course on applications of interactomics using genomics and proteomics technologies. Today's lecture will also be delivered by Mr. Sushil Vaidya in continuation of his previous lecture and discussion about BLI technology. This time he is going to conduct the hands on session and show you how to perform this experiment on biological samples of interest. I am sure now you will be able to understand the principles much better and also get a fair understanding about the protocols and the technology how to use that for your own experiments. So, let me welcome Mr. Vaidya again for this demonstration session which I am sure going to be very stimulating for you. We had seen the uh the BLI presentation, what the technology behind uh, in the in the BLI as well as the few applications. Now we can do the the experiment. How easily we can do the kinetic studies using the the BLI technology. Uh, sorry for actually like uh, I was planning to project the uh, the screen on the uh, on the projector. So but but I unable to do that. Um, so using this we can uh, with a connected to the server uh, so workstation we can we can do the experiments. Uh, so, what exactly we are doing here is the first experiment I am going to start is the kinetics here. The kinetics experiment what I am going to do is the first experiment. So, kinetics and affinity measurements using the first experiment we are we are uh, doing the affinity measurements as well as the kinetic rates constants uh, for the mouse monoclonal antibodies using the protein A as a ligand. Uh, the what I am going to do here is the first. Uh, I will I will put the the first column in the in the 96 well plate here the buffer the buffer is the SD buffer the sample diluent and the second column I will put the the biotinylated uh, the protein A as a ligand and the third column once again I put a buffer the buffer is here is the SD buffer the sample diluent buffer which consists of uh, your PBS PS 7.4 as well as the twin 20.02 percent and the 0.1 percent BSA. So, why you can ask so many components are in the buffer. So, generally why we are adding the, the surfactants as well as the BSA is like a, it reduces the non-specific interactions. Generally protein have a charge species have a tendency to bind to the so any solid support. To, to reduce this non-specific binding what we are doing is we are adding a surfactants and as well as the blocking agents like the BSA. In case of the ELISA you are adding a BSA are the surfactants like twin 20 or the uh, triton x hundreds or, or any other surfactants like NP40 and all that. Now we are using same thing in the in the buffer systems the PBS buffer which it is a PS7.4 as well as consists of the BSA as and twin 20. Uh, and then the last column if you look at the sample column number 4 is your most monochrome antibody. We have a serial threefold dilutions we will do it and then uh, we can study the interaction between the most monochrome antibody to the protein A ligand. So, this is what the experimental plan. What are the concentrations we can we can look at before that uh, the 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 biotinylated protein A ligand I will take it around uh, 1.2 microgram per ml that is that that much concentration is good enough for the the immobilization of the biotinylated ligand protein A. And, uh, the the most monoclonal antibody I will take it around uh, 10 microgram per ml is the concentration is equal to around 66.6 uh, .6 nanomolar. Using 66 that is the highest concentration we will go threefold dilutions using that around 6 titration series we can do th using that. So, one last column I will put it as a blank buffer just only a SD buffer. So, why we need a referencing is like that sometimes even the buffer can give say artifacts system can generate artifacts to subtract those data we need a blank reference. So, we can we can with a using a 7 pro we have a 8 channel we can either go with the entire 8 channel or just only 7 channel or you want to just 
just test it on a single sample that is also possible. It is need not like that you have to if it is a 8 channel you have to go with a 8 channel. If you have one sample with a one sensor you can do it or three samples you have a three sensor you can do it. It depends upon the how you are going to design your template. And, and the, these are the concentration very simple and, and the, I, am, I am taking about the time around the 30 seconds is my baseline time just and the 120 seconds I will look for the loading how much load it happens on that and our, we can the software have a compatibility like you can extend when you are doing the acquisition itself you won't extend some more time it is possible or you won't you see that there is a saturation happens then you want to uh, just jump to the next step yes that is also possible. This is this feature is not in case of the SPR once you fix this time you can't change but in case of the BLI technology is a possibility like that you can you can play around with the timings. And, and the, as the next baseline I will do for a 60 seconds where the, the once the immobilization is happened then the unborn molecule you want to wash up we need a stable baseline then we can using 60 seconds is good enough. I will do the 120 seconds association where your antibody binds to the immobilized protein A and then dissociation I will do it around 120 seconds. The 3 around 2, 5 minutes around roughly if you take it around um, hardly it is not, not more than uh, uh, 15 minutes. So in a 15 minutes you will finish off your entire kinetics experiment in a one goal. In comparison with the SPR, so one, one injection says suppose after immobilization it is a 3 to 4 minutes immobilization then each concentration say suppose you are injecting a um, 1 nanomolar solution, 1, 1 nanomolar concentration 120 seconds is 2 minutes and then the 3 seconds. So totally 5 minutes is the one, one concentration you are. So if you are doing for a 6 concentration it is roughly a half an hour time more than half an hour it is after the regeneration then washing then the injecting the same samples over the immobilized surface it is roughly more than a 1 hour experiment but you can quickly finish off in a 15 to 20 minutes of time. So where you can get the, the fast uh, the, the determining your uh, the kinetic rates constants and then uh, easily quickly screen the experiment which is the binders which are not binders in case of the screening experiments if you are doing the full uh, maturity uh, kind of uh, experiments where you want to get the full kinetics pattern then, then you can use it quickly um, develop a method and then get the KD value. In comparison I can say that why uh, the SPR and the BLI, the BLI is a faster. So suppose when you are developing a method you do not know how much I have to immobilize on the my sensor surface that you can quickly screen on the sensor uh, on the different concentration if I put the, the, the immobilizing molecule on the sensor surface say suppose 1 microgram per ml, 5 microgram per ml, 10 microgram per ml then then you go for the, the further association say so suppose 1 microgram per ml I am getting a cons a response of around 0.5 nanometer and 5 nanogram uh, sorry 5 microgram per ml concentration also I am getting a uh, around 0.5 nanometer response. Then you can compare say if I whether I need to immobilize higher concentration or lower concentration because 1 microgram per ml also are getting a 0.5 response and 5 microgram per ml concentration also are getting a the 0.5 response. Then the question is like whether you required to overload on the sensor surface using the concentration. So what happens is in the label free platforms if you have more concentration you are start immobilizing on the sensor surface there is a possibility that steric hindrance happens. There is a one molecule binds here there is a one more molecules immobilized here and one more molecule. So your binding pockets are something like very close to each other there may be possibilities that due to the more crowding on the sensor surface there is a possibility of less binding or sometimes it leads to a non-specific binding or you can see the biphasic associations. These are the different uh, ways when you are looking at the interpretation of the, uh, the, the sensograms what we call it as we are getting the data the binding curves we call it as sensograms. Looking at the sensograms whether it is a 1 is to 1 binding model or a 2 is to 1 binding model or a 1 is to 2 binding model so easily we can look at it to using the, that those sensograms. So now we can we can start the experiment it is uh, just only the sample preparation time takes us some, some in that but the operation time on the instrument is something like very quickly you can get the data. So uh, is anybody uh, would like to do uh, with me for the sample preparation fine yes please. So this is the, the, the 96 well plate black plates we are using it is a not a transparent plate just it is a plastic plates polypropylene flat bottom plates 
we are using in the entire experiment. Uh, why you can ask, why, you, why we have to use a black plate rather than the transparent plate? The question is here is, it is works on the interference based technology. Light will be passed through the sensor. So I can show you these are, these are the sensors. Uh, typically it is like this. If you can come around here, you can, you can see that how exactly it looks like. Uh, or, or later also once the experiment is done, you can, you, can, you, can, you can look it into that. These are the typically your sensors. Yeah, either you can pass this tray to everyone, there, how it looks. So typically it looks like your injection needle. Everything is happening at the tip of the surface, the interactions. Just the surface area of this, uh, the, the fiber optic is just only 600 micrometer in diameter. Okay. Well capacity is 390 mm. Sorry, 390 micrometer. Uh, but uh, uh, the minimum dipping volume is what we are working is to. So here we have a SD buffer. Okay, the sample diving buffer. So it consists of a PBS PS7.2 and twin, twin as well as the PS in that. So a liquid 200 microliter in all the beds. Okay. First. On, on side by side, what we are doing is here, these sensors are actually a dry coated. The, the streptavidin, what I am using the sensor here is the streptavidin chemistry. So I have a biodynamic coating A with you. So what I am doing is these sensors I will hydrate with the, this buffer. So the minimum hydration time is at 10 minutes. So a liquid 200 microliter in this guy. Yeah. The first column one and column three, you can put 200 microliter. 200 microliter each way. Column one, one to seven. So on side by side, what I'm doing is, I had taken a one more plate here. I had already added the 200 microliter each of the same buffer. I'm placing this like this in the group. So this is the sensor tray. This is a 96 well plate format once again. So these are the seven streptavidin sensors I had taken here, and then I am carefully I am putting like this. So it will be like I did it up to G. Okay. Then you can add column three. Only the time is the making a plate, that's all. The rest, once you make a program, it is unattended, just to leave it there. You've been adding it. No, not required, just eight, eight or G in the spoon, no. not H. We are doing with the seven sensors. Okay, then now uh, I have a protein A here, the biotinylated protein A, it is a 250 microgram per ml. Okay, take a uh, around 15 microliter from this. Then make up to 1500 microliter. So we should let others do it. Yeah. Take around uh, the, the 15 microliter diluted to uh, 1.5 ml. Take a 10 microliter, this corresponds to a 10 microgram. A 10 microgram is placed into the, the 1 ml of the water. It's nothing but a 1.5 ml of this and 15 ml of sample. Means 1485 microliter, 15 of that. Let's see, corresponds to a, it's a 1.2 microgram per ml of the white and liquid protein.
thoroughly partnership which is popular. So why I wanted to make you guys this you feel that of how how is that very simple to operate. So then you aliquot uh, the 200 microliter of this in each bit. There should not be air bubble, right? So now uh, we have to make a, the, the binding partner, the most small antibody. So this is exactly one mg per ml. I have 20 microliter here. Take a 10 microliter or a 5 microliter, transfer to the corresponding 1 ml or 500 microliter. So okay, then, then I, I feel uh, take a 5 microliter, put it into 500 microliter. So it corresponds to your 10 microgram per ml, the concentration, the strength. So transfer 300 here and rest well you put it buffer and then series do the series. 100 microliter take it, transfer and then thoroughly mix it. Then take 100, then mix it. Okay, or otherwise I will do it, not a problem here. Okay.
this for 300 here, 200. You can ask, I will, once again I will transfer here only. In this well, first well itself, I can then, I will... Take this hundred, then transfer. So last well I kept it blank because zero concentrations. Okay. okay, we have done the plate preparation. Now we can go for the, the experimental plan. So now the experimental plan, uh, we, we have a two softwares here. The software, one for the acquisition and the other for the data analysis. So in the first acquisition, we are, we are acquiring the data. Once, once the acquired data, we have to go for the data analysis. So the two softwares. So first, what we'll do is we'll go for the acquisition. I'm going to do double click on this. So when you do double click, the instrument starts initialization. It's go back and forth. So you can see the sound. It will take roughly around 30 seconds for the initialization. In comparison to SPR, when you when you start the experiment. You have to like inch pass the buffers, stabilize the, the flow, and all that. Here, nothing is there. Just come morning, switch on the instrument, allow for a 40 minutes, then stabilize. Just because the lamp has to be warm up here. Nothing is there. If you now look at the status, which is showing that initialization. So it will go x, y, z direction alignment. Then it will come to message as a ready here. It's just roughly a 30 seconds initialization. So now you can see that the instrument is ready. So we can start the experiment. So when you click on the software acquisition data acquisition, <coughs> then you can see there is a wizard. In the wizard, what kind of experiments you wanted to do? Whether you wanted to do a kinetic study or you wanted to do a quantitation study. So we have an option here, kinetic as well as the quantitation. So our interest is here, kinetics experiments. So we can do the epitope binning also. There is one more software here for that. So I will now check the, the kinetics experiments. Here I am clicking on. Then the screen mark, I have to say go. Using this, I will take a blank experiment here. There are some inbuilt templates are there. But this is the best way to go for a blank experiment where you can make your own template mark. So if you know the blank templates, how to make it your experimental design, it is very quick. Uh, so I will say go, go on the click here. Now if you look at this, uh, the window, if you look at this is your plate format here, you, you can see there are different panes here. One is called as a plate definition, assay definition, sensor assignment, review experiment, and one experiment. So these are different, uh, these are the five actually uh, pages are there, you can, you can design those. So what exactly the plate definition? You had to feed the information, what are all the things you added in the plate. So what we had in the column number one, this is 96 well bit format, column number one, first we had placed a buffer. The second column we had load. The third column is here once again the buffer, the fourth column is the sample, the analyte. So just we had to assign those informations. So how we are doing this? Um, buffer. The fourth is your sample. So as I had sample. But I am using only a 7 sensor, not eight, all the 8 sensors. What I will do is I will just select it, remove it. So just only 
plate definition we had to feed here in the in the template so in the sample id what you had feed the buffer okay so control c typically your looks like excel sheet okay then the load you have a bio protein a then the once again you had buffer right control c and then you can go with the the buffer then you have a mouse igg okay so here the important is a uh, mouse igg you have to mention your concentration because if you not feed the concentration you you will not get the kd value so concentration is the one of the parameter when you are calculating the kd kinetic constant rate constants so one of the concentration parameter is important so what is the general igg kd is 150 kilo dalton so we have to feed the 150 kilo dalton here the molecular weight kd cut off then control c once again you required all the parameter so my starting concentration is the top concentration is 10 microgram per ml so just if i type it 10 microgram per ml here the concentration 10 microgram per ml software have a you can change the concentration parameter like concentration microgram per ml or mg per ml or anything and the next even automatically when you put the 10 microgram per ml then the when you put the kd value the the size of the protein then automatically it calculates the 66.67 nanomolar of your 10 microgram of igg corresponds to the 66 nanomolar roughly so what i will do is just i will i will select all this okay i will right click it i will set well data then i have a option here whether i can go with a concentration basis or the molar concentration basis my concentration basis is around 10 my 10 microgram per ml is the stock divided by i had done a three fold dilution so what i will do is just i will type it 3 10 divided by 3 then i will choose i had done a programming in such a way that top to bottom right then what i will do divide 10 i will choose a template here is the down the 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 black dot is the one which is the highest top concentration the lighter one is the lowest i'm using this format if you have feeded this information you can put it in that way or or you can low low to top then that also possible then i will say that okay then automatically when you choose this then you have a three fold dilution so the kd range covering from 66.67 nanomolar it all the way six concentration three fold it is 0.2 nanomolar around it's roughly equivalent to 200 picogram or uh, picomolar so these are the things you had feeded in the plate definition then the next is the assay definition the plate we had feed but we have to tell the software we have to go this is the first step this is the second step we have to assign that then only instrument move according to the respective wells so what is your what what are all the information we have to feed in this here there is a section called as a add in the add when you goes go click on this what we are doing we are doing a baseline we are doing a loading we are doing a association as well as the we are going to do dissociation so those informations we have to add so what here is association i have to click it dissociation i have to click it baseline by default there is a one baseline is there already you need a one more baseline yes we have two buffer columns that's why i am adding a one more baseline and what apart from that we have a loading loading is nothing but the immobilization so i will just click it then say okay so it will ask the step name baseline already exists because it already is there do you need one more yes so these are the steps we have to assign instrument go according to the back end flow the robotic arm so what is the first step here i will take this arrow mark using this and i will double click on this it is just just cross mark so first step is your baseline then the next step is what it is a loading so i will take this arrow mark then once again double click on this it is a load 
Then the third I have a one more baseline too. I will double click on this. Then the fourth is your association. Double click on this. And the dissociation, you can ask where, where exactly the dissociation happens. I will do it in the column number three. Once again, same buffer. I will do it. So one, two, three, four, three. The step is first column the robotic arm move to first it will dip into the first well goes to the second then the third fourth and back to third. So then you can assign how much time I have to do it 60 seconds generally I will go or 30 seconds or 60 seconds I will go for the baseline. So just we will go for a baseline this one association time generally I will go for around 120 seconds is, is just 2 minutes time. And the dissociation I will go for around uh, three, 3 minutes 180 seconds and the baseline to how much you require 60 seconds one more and the loading time how much I will do it around 120 seconds. Let us take it assume just we will take it 5 minutes. Hmm? These I will tell you this SPR kind of in this one it is has to be based on the experience you have to put it. It is not like that. General assumption is like that minimum is 300 seconds, 200 seconds we put it. So just I had put 300 seconds. But I, I in beginning I have mentioned that software have an option I can jump to next step. If I feel that the concentration is good enough, this is good enough for my binding I can jump to next step or still if you feel that yeah it is not enough you can extend the time that particular time still the loading. So I will put a general around 300 seconds. If we feel that it is around roughly 0.5 to 1 nanometer if it is loading is happening then we can jump to the next step. Okay, then we are, I am using a streptavidin sensor around roughly experimental time is totally 13 minutes but even less than that it will be probably. Okay, these are the according to that sensor will move and the next is sensor assignment. Uh, in my in the talk I had you had seen that there is a sensor compartment as well as the sample compartment. Sensor compartment where you are placing the your sensor tray, the sample compartment where exactly you are placing your sample plates. So you can see here, so this is also 96 well plate format. So I have to tell the instrument where from where which column the sensor has to be pick up. Okay. By default it is a 1. Suppose you had fixed put your sensor somewhere in the column number 8, what you can do is just say remove it then automatically it will think that sensor you had placed at column number 8, it will pick up the sensor from that particular position and then read. Okay. So now by default I had placed, okay. then you, when you are doing a QC kind of your experiments and all that you can provide your lot number for your sensors because it is a very important when you do it in an industry kind of uh, setups where exactly QC monitors those lot numbers what you had tested and all that. So the, that is the one important or if you have any other information you want to feed that also fine. Then the review experiment before going to start your experiment whether can I my whatever I had set up the experiment is fine or not. So this is your sensor compartment sensor tray where we are placed this is your sample plate, sample plate. If you just look it here using this arrow mark just so in the, the these uh, sensors are highlighted by the border black color if you look at here the sensor is picking from the column number 1 and it is highlighted by the black color the first well it is going there then it is going to the second column then the third then the fourth and back here. So my experiment setup is fine sometimes what happens we are running a so many sample there is a possibility that you will miss the steps. So it is best way to review the experiment whether my sensor is moving in a proper way or not if it is something you miss while the numbering you can go back and then reassign it. So that's the actual real time that it's doing all those steps? Yes, yes. It seems like it was going very fast. Yeah, it's a program. Just uh, it, it just dips very quickly, that's all it needs to do? Yeah, based on the timing here, what this is the review. Be prior to the experiment, we yeah. are reviewing whether my experiment setup is fine or not. So these are the timings I had provided here. So then the, when we are reviewing the experiment before starting the experiment. Yeah. And the run experiment, the last here where you want to save your data the path you have to provide. So I will click here and the desktop I will I will create a new folder um, IIT demo Sorry. okay I will choose this folder 
temperature we are we are 23 degree we are working at room temperature now this instrument you can work from 15 degree to 40 degree so set, set you can you can set and allow for stabilization of the it have pelt here so the next what is your experiment name so i will just mention as a kinetics okay then here in the if you look at come here run settings delay experiment start and the shake sample plate while waiting what exactly this is i mentioned in the earlier sensor comes with a dry actually these are dry sucrose coating but we have to hydrate in your buffer what what buffer you are using for your experiment the sensor has to be hydrate minimum hydration time is a 10 minutes okay so what i did was during my sample preparation itself first i started a hydration i started the sample preparation so i saved my time otherwise if you forgot the uh, forget this one hydration then you can check in this so after 10 minutes experiment will start or other, otherwise if you want another 20 minutes also you can assign the time how much you required during the hydration time whether your sample plate has to be in the shaking condition i mentioned it is not a hyd Uh, fluidics based it's works on the dip and rate so we samples will be in the shaking condition generally not what happens is during the waiting waiting period you are in the shaking protein have a tendency to aggregate when it's once one there's a possibility generally we not advise that okay then i will uncheck this during only experiments we require a shaking uh, during hydration not required so then you can you can mention the uh, this uh, plate temperature you want to work from 15 degree to 45 degree. now it is around uh, room temperature 23 degree so even after the experiment do you want to hold the temperature once again back to 23 yes you can you can click it not a problem so after this this is what we have done the experiment plus the 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 setup you can say then we can say start go so before going to that we have to place the sensor as well as my sample tray in the instrument right so what i where my sensor my sensor tray is here okay this is the, these are the seven sensors i am using i am placing here in the uh, sorry uh, i can't uh, show you the this one once you, after the experiment you can guys look it into that i will place here and my sample plate so we had done we had properly we had placed all the both then we can say go so when you ask when you say go we have started experiment the there is a one warning message it will be the the black so nothing nothing is binding that's why there is no interference changes from the from the sensor tip probably the the well volume and all that so now if you look at here okay, now. now now the binding is happening the protein a is coating to the streptavidin layer so as the molecules binding to the sensor surface gradually rising the the sensor gram in that <coughs> 
this as the molecules bind to sensor surface you can see the shift in the sensor gram. I had done around 300 seconds I had put for this around by 50 seconds I am almost my criteria is more than 0.5 nanometer between 0.5 to 1 nanometer I should get a loading that is good enough for me for a interaction studies I do not want to even overcrowd on the sensor surface the immobilization. So even I can go to the next step I will, I will do it around 1 nanometer loading then we can study the. Um, from one, uh, 10 picomolar to 1 millimolar you can go that is the broad on par with your BIA core. So around uh, that is good enough for me I think loading. One nanometer. Okay, fine. I'm I'm going to the next step. It's good enough for me the immobilization level. Next, if you look at this columns green highlighted by the particular step is happening. Uh, now, if you look at the next step is the the baseline where if it is there is any unborn molecule just get washed off in that. And, and very negligible the amount is very negligible whatever you are immobilizing you have in the well you have so much but when it is bind to sensor surface it is very little. So 60 seconds will be your baseline it is it's a more stable baseline what I am observing 30 second is good enough I can jump to next step I need a very stable baseline sometimes what happens is due to there is a maybe you can observe a drift and all that. So, this is very stable baseline. The drift probably comes from different components in your buffer systems that play important role when you when you have a protein you have stabilized with the some surfactants or some other components you have diluted in a different buffer altogether when you are doing dilution that probably sometimes causes those drifts. So, if you look at now the next step is the association it moves to the association here if you look at I am aligning the data this is the the first concentration 10 microgram per ml then the next 10, 10 then the 3.3 .3 microgram per ml this is your most small antibody binding to the the immobilized protein A very simple experiment. So, nice dose distribution. So, I think uh, lower ones are not picking up it is in the sense it is too diluted the samples or otherwise we have to extend the time it has to come very nicely dose distribution because we had just put around 120 seconds probably we have to extend to some some more another 60 or 120 seconds. So, the lower also will come very nicely. So, let us acquire for 120 seconds. So, we are we are actually I forgot to mention we are working with a 1000 rpm. So, we have a shaker range working from 100 rpm to 1500 rpm depending upon the applications we can choose the right rpm. Generally when we working with the kinetics experiments we go with a 1000 rpm by default. When we do the quantitation experiments we generally work with a 400 rpm 
where we are working with a microgram level concentrations so like 200 to 1 microgram in that range that is that is fine. When you are working with a concentrations like uh, in kinetics experiments we go with the. So, now it move back to the, the dissociation step you can you can observe the, the bone molecule start dissociating. So, just I am doing around around 1. 180 seconds generally either any SPR or, or if you take it a BLI uh, technologies. So, dissociation rate it is a 5 percent or 5 to 10 percent dissociation is good enough to calculate the, the KD value. It is need not like that you have say suppose I am giving an example you immobilized a 100 molecule on the sensor surface then your 100 analyte will bind to the sensor surface then it is need not like that all 100 percent 100 molecule has to dissociate just 10 molecule if you get dissociation that you typically observe like this that is good enough for you to calculate the kinetic constants as well as the So, when you say 10 percent you mean 10 percent of the signal height if it comes down by 10 percent then you are yeah that is that is enough good enough. That is how you do it? Yeah. So, that is enough time. Even SPR also same it is good enough need not like that we have to dissociate completely all yeah, yeah. that is why we go with a, there is a condition called as a regeneration. So, rest 90 is bound to your sensor surface right using a some agents like a higher salt strength solutions like 1 molar or 2 molar sodium chloride or a magnesium chloride or if you want to change the pH like a glycine a pH 2 or a pH 1.5 10 millimolar glycine that is good enough or we will go with a 50 millimolar uh, sodium hydroxide solution. So, that will remove the, uh, the remaining bound unlight. So, one thing we have to consider when you are doing the regeneration is stability of your ligand whatever you had immobilize on the sensor surface that should be stable after the regeneration. There may be a sometimes what happens if you are using a some conditions like glycine or a some higher like a base site probably your protein undergoes a denaturation. So, then next experiment we cannot use the sensor back. So, that is why we have to carefully consider the, the regeneration solutions. When we test the compounds like small molecules generally comes in that range nanomolar to micromolar range. So, that time uh, we start with uh, some 100 microlot beyond if you are trying with that concentration is a point so of So, that is an interesting question um, the B accord the size of the, the interact or the analyte they call it. Um, mass change actually. What, well, the, 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 the bigger it is the easier it is to detect. Yeah. Is that an issue here? Can, does this it's similar. If the the as the as the low the size wise the molecule as a very small then you can see a noisy sensograms even in BI core also same. Yeah, I know B core is definitely that way. So similar we we also exp same thing. yeah as bigger molecules bind to sensor surface you get a nice sensogram. Uh, I see, I see. So, yeah. so I think it is how done. Can you, how low can you go? Hmm? What's, the, what's the smallest that you can? One fifty Dalton. One fifty Dalton. Yeah. Okay, so it's about the same. So, I think uh, now status saying that instrument is ready experiment is finished and here also is saying that experiment is complete. So, we, we got a data now we have to go for the data analysis. So, what we got a data for using from this. So, I will minimize this then I will go for the data analysis I am here I will click on double click on the data analysis ok. Then I am uh, on my left hand side on the bottom where your data is stored. So, here I have a folder called IIT demo I will drop down here then I will click on the kinetics the experiment name I provided is the kinetics. The pink color file here is just I will double click on this when I double click automatically the kinetics data will be opened here because I started the experiment in a kinetics mode. So, we have a quantitation mode if you are running experiment in quantitation mode the data will open in the quantitation if it is kinetics it will open in the kinetics. So, I will click on this ok this is what the data is get opened in the processing section I need to process the data. So, what I have to do I have to do subtract the blank from the uh, reference reference well from the rest of the this one. So, why I mentioned because sometimes buffer also gives a artifacts. So, we have to subtract those datas. This is the raw data entire view here raw data view and alignment and all that if and you can particularly you can click on these and 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 this is what the data is your association and the dissociation. 
okay so here in the in the in the top section here sensor selection what i have to do is i have to do the subtraction i had put a here zero concentration what i will do is just i'll select this right click it change well type to a reference well okay then i enable it this now what i will do is i will go for the subtraction here in the subtraction i will use a reference wells we have a different uh, referencings so we call it as a parallel referencing then the double referencing and all so depending upon the experiments sometimes you you find a non specific binding that time you have to go for the double reference or the parallel reference but this experiments actually uh, uh, prior to any experiments when you are when you are going to set up take a sensor single sensor dip into the analyte okay no no immobilization no nothing when the sensor when you dip into the analyte the your analyte should not interact with the sensor it indicates that there is a no non specific binding what happens is generally these proteins are the char species it's a fiber optic fiber optic is a selenol o minus okay then you have protein is a positively charged there is a possibility of the tendency to attack on this glass then maybe you can see the binding observation so that's why we add surfactants in that but if you still you are getting a non specific binding you have to address that non specific binding first and then you have to go for the experiment so in this case actually it is a very well tested molecule and uh, igg is in presence of the uh, the tween as well as the the bsa it will not show any non specific binding so that's why i went directly with that experiment so what i i enabled the reference well subtraction then the align y axis what what do you mean by alignment here i will enable this al align to baseline what what exactly the baseline is here what 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 exactly it do is so end of your baseline i need a very stable baseline end of your baseline last 10 second it will take it and the beginning of your association origin zero so data get aligned i will take it align y axis to the baseline i had done a 60 seconds i will take a last 10 seconds 10 seconds of your baseline so 50 to 60 i will put a 50 to 60 then there is a interstep correction one more function is there what exactly interstep correction is nothing but when you are performing the baseline and the dissociation in the same well we can use this function interstep correction so what it does end of your association beginning of the dissociation that data get aligned because it works on the dip and read sensor move from one well to other well when it dips there may be possibilities of the, you can observe some jumps so those jumps has to be aligned so that's why we use this interstep corrections and then savetsky gole filtering that is for the smoothing function the sensogram gets smoothened so then we say the process the data when you process this is your raw data this is the subtracted data and then when you look at the alignment y alignment y as i mentioned end of your baseline beginning of the association then the the align x is data is nothing but end of your association beginning of the dissociation get aligned so this is if this is the perfect uh, sensogram so we had done the processing of the sensogram now we have to do the analysis the next window is your analysis here in the analysis we have fitting models we have different fitting models one is to one fitting model two is to one fitting model one is to two heterogeneous there are different binding models are there so generally when you do any biomolecular interact interactions we try to fit for one is to one one protein binding to the corresponding one there may be some situation in the biological process there may be a two is to one heterogeneous binding model or one is to two bivalent models and all that so we had to choose the right one if you know thoroughly because you when you are doing a publication say suppose i got a one is to one fitting data uh, that was not giving a good good fit but you go for you went for the 2 is to 1 fitting model then you submitted a manuscript to the some journal then the the reviewer will ask you one question you have mentioned the fitting 2 is to 1 binding model do you have a, any supporting data by any other technique it is a 2 is to 1 interaction you have to provide generally reviewer ask this question for the any papers 
So that is why we always try to fit for a 1 is to 1 interaction. Otherwise if you have a ITC data with a 2 is to 1 stoichiometry then that is good enough or otherwise you have to establish that or otherwise you have to modify your protocol where you get a 1 is to 1 interaction. So then we have a fitting models I had chosen a 1 is to 1 binding model and then fitting uh, in the in the fitting what is local fitting and the global fitting. Local fitting is nothing but the calculating the k on k off as well as the kd values corresponds to each binding curves sensograms each concentration it fit look each one when you go for the global fitting it will consider the mean of your calculation all the binding curves generally when you are publishing a data uh, people prefer for the global fitting data rather than the local fitting so we will go with a global fitting so what we do is global fitting is i'll choose here because each sensogram also giving a one one color but I, I want to make it into a one color in a one group. So what I will do is I will select here right click it set color by I will choose one blue color here this and then I will say go if you look at all the sensograms become blue color it become a one, 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 one group kind of thing. So what I will do is global fit group by color I am using and R max unlinked by sensor I am choosing the R max unlinked by there is a experimental design R max linked and R max unlinked R max linked when we are doing is suppose I am taking a one sensor I am passing the all the concentration on to the particular sensor then we call it as a R max linked because I had taken a six concentration all the six concentration if I pass on a one sensor that is R max linked but my experiment here in the high throughput what I am doing is six sensor or seven sensors I had taken and each con each concentration I probed with the one one sensor that is why I am unlinking that. So I am using R max unlinked. So this is then say fit curve okay. When you when you do the fit curve you, if you look at this this is the association the red one is your theoretical and the, the blue one is your experimental. So if you go here this then you can get the in the tabular column you have a KD it is KD is around 3.7 nanomolar and and your K on 4.28 into 10 to the power of 5 and the K dissociation 1.5 into 10 to the power of minus 3. So we can say the how my fit is good we have statistical parameter also in that my fit is good or not. My acceptance is something like that if my R square the regression coefficient for the fitting if I am getting a more than 0.95 then it is a good fitting I am getting around 0.99 it is a good fit and how significant is my fit is. It is the goodness of the fit and significant of the fit. There are two parameters. We have one more statistical parameter called as a chi square. My chi square should be less than 3. I am getting around 0 0.12. So the fit is good. So when your R square is more than 0 0.95, automatically your chi square also comes down. If it is a fitting is not good, then you can you can see the, uh, the your diff difference in the chi square as well as the R square. So this is about the data or you wanted to look at in how my each concentration if you want to exclude something concentration because I have run six concentration four or five concentration is good enough for the, for the for the publication. So if I if I look at this is this data if you look at this is not good. So I can exclude this just if I uncheck this is okay the next that's so one concentration I am excluding still I can do the fitting KD is not changed much but R square somewhat changed. So then what I will do is I will save report when I save report um, export You have an excel sheet report 
you have experimental summary here, sensor tray where you had placed your sensor, then processing parameters how you had done the processing of the, the data, sensor data where you had kept the sensor, sample data how you had where you had placed the samples and all that in the plate, this is your raw data, then the processing data, this is raw data, subtracted data, align y, align x, all these data parameters. Then the, then the stacked graph, this is the fitting model and this is the residual view. Residual view is nothing but the difference between your experimental and the theoretical, how the, how the residual fit is, that is one. And the results table, where the table, you have a, a KD calculations, errors, K on, K off, statistical parameters, all informations you can find here in this, okay. Then you have a ISO affinity graph, ISO affinity graphs play a very important role when you are performing a screening kind of experiments where it, it will plot a K dissociation versus K on. So say suppose giving an example you have a 10 batches of a, some proteins, you are all 10 batches are behaving simi similar, then all data points will be come into the same cluster, then you can say that it is on par, everything is passing. If it is some of the batches are something falling that side and this side, it is deviating from that. It is very important when you do industry kind of a uh, platform or, or when you are doing a validation or such kind of experiments. Steady state analysis is there, one more. But this experiments, it is not reaching steady states. I will tell you because protein A have a probability of binding a 4 IgGs. One protein A can take up a 4 IgG. That is why it never reaches the the equilibrium or otherwise I have to load very less, just a 0.1 nanometer or a 2 nanometer then I can observe the, the steady state. So that, uh, that also steady state is a very important where steady state when happens is uh, your A plus B is equal to AB complex, right? 50 percent A plus B is complex formation and also this complex simultaneously dissociates back to the A and B. So this, this phase is called as equilibrium. So such kind of data we go with the steady state analysis. And the group view, this this if you want, uh, if you are performing some other kind of a presentations and or uh, I think different batches when you are running, you can get the sensograms, those things. So these are the report format and, and say so the good advantage is like that you want to, this fitted results you want to use for the some other software. Like say suppose you want to, this data you want to re review in a or analyze in a BIA core software, yes it is possible or you want to use a scrubber third party software, yes you can do using this, uh, multiple options are there. Very easy, uh, very quickly you can, you can determine the kinetics on rates and the off rates and, and you have fitting different models are here. 1 is to 1, 2 is to 1, mass transport we have, bivalent analytes we have, different models are there. So this is what about the kinetics in quickly hardly we had not taken a much time around roughly less than 1 hour we finished experiments. So this now completes the two lectures on bilayer interferometry for studying biomolecular interactions where we discuss this with application scientist Mr. Sushil Vaidya from Paul Life Sciences and he gave you some basic understanding as well as hands on demonstration session of this novel technology platform. We will continue discussion about new technology platforms for doing biomolecular interactions in the next lecture, also we will continue with another technology platform for biomolecular interaction analytics using micro scale thermophoresis or MST technology along with Taiko NT technology. So, these new technology platforms will be discussed in next lecture. Thank you.